Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Steven and this is Northwest Small Batch Brewing. And today is installment number three of four. So I'm doing four different smash beers using four different base grains. So I can compare and contrast these different base grains and I don't know, something fun to do. Uh, I've already got some exciting like revelations for myself on it. Uh, so the first two are done. I will post links in the description for the first two. Um, the first one being a two row smash, like pale uh, malt smash. And then the second one was a Munich malt smash beer. So this is number three. And this one is Vienna malt. This will be a Vienna smash beer. So before I get started, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I mostly make videos on home brewing, brewing beer, ciders. I try different kinds of experiments, mostly testing my own theories on things uh, when it comes to brewing. So take a look around if you like that kind of thing and you find it interesting. Uh, it would help my channel tremendously if you hit the thumbs up like button. And while you're there, go ahead and subscribe so that way you can get notified every time I put out a new video. So. I'm going to start with 12 pounds of Vienna malt. Uh, and I will be milling that very finely, as I usually do, even tighter than a credit card's width on my mill, uh, because I can. And because I do a brew in a bag bag and it works, uh, I will throw in a couple of handfuls of rice holes to make up for maybe having it too fine of a crutch. But otherwise, I get a really good uh, return on that. So. Let's take a look at a clip uh, real quick of milling the grain. Okay, so that's the grain uh, having been milled. It is actually the night before I'm going to brew. Uh, the reason being is that I get off work tomorrow half day. So I will actually um, put all the water I need and stuff and actually I can program my system to actually start heating the water before I even get home. So that as soon as I walk in the door, I can mash in immediately and that saves me like an hour and a half uh, just waiting for the water to heat up. Uh, and that way I can actually brew my beer tomorrow even having worked half a day. So what that means is I will pop up a picture on one side here wherever I have room uh, just to show you what I'm talking about. I have my tank with four gallons of water and uh, I use spring water from the store if you're wondering. And then uh, I will set it, uh, so I'm looking for a mash temperature of 155. So I'm going to program it to heat up my water to a strike temperature of about 160. So that when I mash in all the grain, it should drop down to about 155, where I'll try to maintain it for an hour. So I've got everything prepped. I got everything ready. So let's assume that it's tomorrow. And let's cut to a video of me mashing in all the grain into the kettle. Okay, so Mashing is done. I've let it mash for an hour. Um, and now what I'm going to do, you'll know, you'll see in the next clip, um, I put up a big ladder, which unfortunately, I don't have a lot of space, so it's hard to fit it in and also get it on video. But 
kind of gets in the way and gets a little crowded, but you'll see I have a ladder I put over the kettle so that I can um, use a pulley to pull the bag out. Uh, and then um, sparge. I'm sparging with three gallons of water around 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, it's just a modified fly sparge. I just take I scoop out some of the water and I pour it over, you know, the grain that's in the bag and let it drain and uh, I call it good. And then, uh, yeah, I bring it up to a boil and uh, we'll go from there. So let's take a look at uh, draining the grain and sparging. All right, so my apologies, guys. It looks like somehow I did not get the footage or edit in the footage of actually sparging. Um, basically, when the bag was up in the air, I used uh, a, a cup to just pour 170, 170 degree water, three gallons worth, over the grain. And then once it all drained, I pulled the bag out. Uh, so I did do it, even though uh, it's not showing up in the video here. Uh, so next up, uh, I bring it up to a boil. So we're going to bring it to a boil for an hour and I'm going to add uh, two additions for hops. Uh, I'm going to do a 60 minute addition and I'm going to do a 15 minute addition. That's a smash beer, so that means only one kind of hops and I'm going to use what I had in the freezer because I want to use that stuff up. So uh, I'm going to use Millennium because that's what I had. It is a pretty bitter hop, so it'll be interesting how, how it works with a sweeter Vienna malt. But um, one ounce of Millennium uh, at 60 minutes and one ounce at 15 minutes, 16.7 uh, alpha acid. And uh, here's some video of that. Okay guys, so we mashed the beer, we boiled the beer, we added the hops at their particular points when they're supposed to be added, and the boil's done. So, uh, now we're at the point where we need to cool it, right? I've turned off the, the heat and removed the hops, from, you know, the hot basket with the hops, and now I need to start chilling it down uh, as quickly as possible and uh, so I do top it up a little bit. Um, I took a refractometer meeting, reading. I didn't put that on video, but it was a little high, uh, which is understandable because I was um, I about a, almost a gallon shy uh, of, of what I wanted, which was five and a half gallons for the batch. So I added half a gallon of water and then um, actually added another quarter gallon as well so to bring it up so at any rate uh, I have a rather unique cooling down method I used five frozen solid two liter soda bottles which I spray down with star, a star sand they're completely sealed uh, none of the stuff on the inside can get out and I just drop them in and they uh, cool down my wort it does take a few hours but uh, Here's a little video of me uh, doing this little unique wort cooling action.
All right, so we are in the home stretch, guys. Uh, so now we wait. Uh, we wait for the work to cool down. I like to let it cool down to about 70 degrees, um, right around there. I mean, a little bit more is okay, I guess, but uh, you don't want it too high, too much higher than that, because the yeast is not happy with that. Um, so for me, it takes two hours, maybe three hours um, it, with the method that I use. I don't know, more or less, uh, it just varies, but um, at any rate, it gets, we get it cooled down to about 70 degrees. I'll take a official hydrometer reading. Um, in fact, I did, uh, because it's just, it's just gotten down to 70 degrees, so I took a, a, an official hydrometer reading. Um, I expected this to hit 1053 uh, with like 70% efficiency. And I actually hit uh, 1056, a little higher than that. So my efficiency is a little higher, maybe 72%. I had talked about this in another video. Um, if you don't hit the exact same gravity number that a recipe calls for, it could just be that that person has a higher efficiency than you. And as long as it's not like a huge discrepancy, it's fine. Don't worry about it. So like in this case, you know, the expected efficiency of 1053 was at 70% efficiency. I actually got 1056. I'm okay with that. It's still going to taste like the same beer. It's going to be fine. It'll just have a tiny bit more alcohol. If it even, you know, completely, um, you know, ferments out the way it's expected to. So I, uh, uh, where are we at? So I need to move the wort from the kettle into my fermenter and then pitch my yeast. So the way I do it is I let it just sort of fall from the spigot down into the fermenter and it's enough of a drop that it creates a reasonable amount of oxygen and mixing and um, I think that'll be fine. I mean, could you do more? Sure, if you wanna go nuts, go nuts, but um, I think that it's, it's sufficient. And I'm going to use Safel yeast uh, US05 because again that's what I have. Uh, I happen to have a packet of it so I'm going to use that and um, we will stick the fermenter in the corner <clears throat> and try to keep it around 70, 68 to 70 degrees uh, and let it ferment for a month. So I will see you back here after that uh, but before I go I will give you one last quick video uh, of me moving the wort into the fermenter and pitching the yeast. And then I will see you uh, back here when it's ready to uh, move into the keg. All right, everybody, so it's been 30 days. I have not uh, touched, opened, peeked at the, uh, the beer so far. It's just been sitting in the corner uh, at room temperature, like 68 Fahrenheit. And so I'm going to go ahead and transfer it using a long silicone tube, and I'm just gonna use the uh, spigot on the fermenter and um, just carefully drain it uh, without any splashing down into a keg. I'll seal up the keg, purge the uh, oxygen out with CO2. Uh, I'll put it on 12 PSI in my kegerator for about a week and it will then be carbonated and ready to try. So here's a quick look at transferring the beer into the keg.
All right, so here we are. Vienna Smash. Just looking at the color, so it's pretty um, opaque. You know, it's definitely not a clear beer, but I didn't use any fining agents either. Um, you know, it's been a week. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, I won't go through everything because the recipe will be in the description, but um, what do we have here? Original gravity 1056, final gravity 10, 8, 1008 makes it about 5.9%. I gotta be honest, when I um, kegged this, it had an unusual smell <clears throat> to it. It wasn't that it was bad, it just was not what I've ever smelled before, really. And I can't decide if it's a yeast problem or if it's just the way Vienna malt is, but let me give it a try, because I can still, it smells, I almost wanna say like nutty, but, um, it also has that sort of um, smell you get when yeast is not happy. So, okay. It's interesting. It's in the it's in the aroma, the smell that I'm talking about. It's hard to explain what the smell is. Um, wow, interesting aftertaste. So it's not in the, in the, it's not in the taste. the The smell has this sort of You'll know it if you ever have yeast that's stressed, it can sometimes um, give off this like underripe apple sort of flavor. <clears throat> so that's what the smell is, but but not fully, but the taste, it's not there on the taste. Um, it's not bad. I would say it tastes thin to me. Um, and has a, a very grain forward like aftertaste that hits you at the end of uh, at the end of the palate. Um, interesting. Well, I would say I don't want to give any spoilers away because I'm going to compare all the smash beers uh, at the end, and I have one more smash beer to make after this, and then I'll compare them all uh, in one video. But um, <clears throat> I would say this is not my favorite that I've made of the four, for the the base malt smash beers that I've uh, that I've made. It's not bad. Uh, it's definitely drinkable. It's just not as good as um, probably uh, uh, any of them that I've made so far. I'd say of of all three that I've made so far, not including the one that's you know in this freezer fermenting. Um, I'd say it's the least favorite. Not bad, but nothing special about it. A little bit thin and simple. The aroma is kind of weird, but the flavor just tastes like normal beer. So um, I don't know. There you go. I use Millennium Hops because that's what I had on hand. So maybe it's the, the Millennium Hops that are giving it that weird um, odor. But anyway, uh, it's good enough to drink. And uh, that's that. So check the uh, description below for the recipe if you're interested. And uh, I will see you next week for another video. And of course, in about a month from now, you'll get another, well, you'll get the final smash beer. And then I can compare all four of them together and start making other stuff. Uh, it's been fun, this whole smash beer journey, but I'm ready to do something else. So. Uh, until next week, happy brewing, cheers. <laughs>